I have worked a really small sample piece um, of five repeats here. So this is um, our setup row, row one along the bottom, and then it's rows two to four repeated five times. Can I just say at this point, so for Emma's, the way Emma's um, done the design, this is this here is now sitting the right way up. So the fans are kind of pointing upwards and it's very lovely. Um, but for our one, you can see, so the one which I made where I just made it longer, you can see that I the I end, I've done it the other way and used that scallop edge as, as the kind of decorative bottom edge. So all you'd need to do if you wanted to, to have that decorative bottom edge is you just omit the last repeat of row four. So you'd end on a row three, it's hard to show you, but you'd end on a row three, which is the um the pico edges. And that gives you I mean it's just so versatile, isn't it? This pattern, it just I just love that. I loved it. And look, it's just given a, that lovely sort of scalloped edge which I pop some beads on. So yeah, plenty of scope. But for the term in terms of the edging um, for Emma's design, which is the um, scarflet with just sort of it's asymmetrical, so it's got edging going um, up along one side, the join in the middle. So this is the other piece with the edging along one side. Um, you need to know that this is the right way up. So with the fans pointing upwards, that is the correct way up, okay? So I have completed my sample piece. I have got five repeats. Now, um, so you can see it's all wonky because it hasn't been blocked. It'll be completely different when we block it. But for each repeat, you'll, you'll need to put six edging stitches on. Okay, so on Emma's sample piece, each piece has got 10 repeats. So she works 60 edge stitches. Mine has got uh, five repeats, so obviously that's 30 edging stitches. And I've used a calculator, so I know that is correct. So, um, sorry, it's this way. So I finished that way. So we're going to start um, from the top, I think we, yeah, top left edge. So we're going to start here. I'm basically, I'm going to start where I've just cast off. So there is a reasonable... A reasonable way to um where I've just fastened off there's a reasonable way to kind of work out where to start I think and I've just got to make 30 double crochet UK terms along this edge now this is um you'll get into a rhythm you'll see where to position your stitches as you go along it's six stitches per repeat okay we've already said that um, but if you want to, you can put stitch markers in and say, right, okay, here's halfway, I need to do 15 in that space, or however you want to do it is absolutely fine, as long as you kind of try your best to be even along this edge. Nobody's going to double check, um, really. So I'm just going to go for it, and we'll see where my stitches fall. Now, to start to start off, all I'm doing is I'm just going to pull a loop of colour, of colour, Pull a loop of yarn, it's the same colour, I keep thinking I'm changing colours, I'm not. Pull a loop of yarn through and then pull the tail through to secure it, so that's just kind of loosely held there. And we can start, I'm not going to count that as our first one by the way, so I'm now going to start and do it. So that's one double crochet, I now think that's kind of secure. Okay, so off we go, and I'm going to try and aim for having six stitches about where my thumb is here. So by the time I get to my thumb, I'm hoping to have done about six stitches. Let's see. So we'll do one in here. That's one, two, sorry, I've already done one, so that's two. And I'm going to do one at the top of that pico. That's three. And I'm gonna do one just under the pico. That's four in that kind of fan space there. And I'm going to do, I might do one more in there, five. And then I'm going to do one in this larger space. Okay, so I've done six stitches along my first repeat. It's really hard to see um, because obviously it's 
all the same colour. That is fine. Don't even worry about it. Get your numbers right and it will all space out beautifully. So I'm going to start again. I'm going to do another six. So one there, two there, because that's quite a large space to fill along there. So I'm going to do two in there. I'm going to do one at the top of that pico. That's three. And I'm going to do two in this bigger gap here like I did before. Four and five. And then I'm going to do one in the gap underneath and that's six. So you can count, this is reminding me, this is how I did it on the longer piece. You can count your total stitches or you can count in six stitch repeats. Um, whichever is easier for you. I've counted in, when you're, when you're working a longer piece, it might be easier to count in six stitch repeats because as long as you're getting multiples of six, you're going to be fine for your edging. Okay, so that might be the better option for the longer piece. Up to you, you decide. So here we go with another repeat. One and two. And one in at the top of the pico, that's three. And two in that larger gap we did, didn't we? Four and five. And one in the final gap, and that's six. Okay, so that's three repeats we've done. We've got two more to go, so let's just finish that up. So I'm doing two in this larger gap, one, two, one at the top of the pico, three, two in that larger gap, four and five, and one in that big gap, that's six. Okay, so I think I am now up to 24 stitches on that side and I've got one more repeat to do. So I'm doing two in that big gap, two, one above that pico, three, two in the next gap down, four and five, oops, sorry, four and five, and one in that final corner, so get in there, and that is six. So I should now have 30 stitches along this edge because it's a multi, it's six times my five repeats. So I'll say it again, it doesn't matter how many repeats you do, as long as you do six stitches per repeat along the edge, your edging is going to work out fine. Okay, so that's your setup row for the left side of the um, of the edging. Okay, so the next um, the next row um, we're going to turn. And we're going to just chain one and all, it's really straightforward. We're going to just go along and put a double crochet in every stitch all the way along. So you don't need really to watch me do that because that's really straightforward. And what this will do, your first kind of setup row, the one that we've just done, might look a little bit higgledy piggledy. This is going to start neatening it all up, straightening it all out and making it look nice and professional okay so we've now got to the end a stitch that you made to make those doubles coming down the edges to quite tight but don't worry it's only going to be difficult this once okay so i'm now to, now at the end okay so the next row we're going to turn again chain two and this one is again really straightforward it's just a treble all the way along okay so um i don't know why i'm going to go in there actually treble so again uk terms all the way along and it just starts really giving a nice whoops straight clean edge on your lace work. Okay, so we're now back on the right place. Yes, we're on the last stitch, last treble. Okay, we're going to turn and we're just going to do another row of doubles going back the other way. That's the 
last double. Okay, so we have now done, if I'll just show you, put that down to one side. We've made, oh, it's really sweet, isn't it? Lovely. Leave it, hook, leave it. So we've made this really lovely um, edging. And when that is blocked out, it's, it's really nice because it's such a contrast with that sort of very plain squared off edging to this lovely curvy lace in the middle. It's gorgeous. 